rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody made that decision today? I will rejoice. Every day you have a decision. Every day comes with a decision. You can decide uh, what to do with the day. You know, some people say I'm sad, but you know, you decided to be sad. Somebody said I'm mad, but you decided to be mad. So since you can decide to be sad, mad, even bad, you can also decide I will be glad and rejoice in it. Anybody made that decision today? Despite of what's going on in my life. You know, some people are sad today. Maybe because their father has gone on. Maybe because they feel like they didn't have much of a father. Maybe there's been a disconnect. But you can't allow that spirit to jump on you. You gotta learn how to shake it off. Just tell somebody, shake it off. You got to decide no matter what, I will be glad and rejoice because there's no father like our God. Hallelujah. So really nobody is fatherless because he said I'll be a father to the fatherless. He said if your mother and father forsake you, the Lord will take you up. Somebody shout hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We bless you. We adore you. We are so grateful that you are our Father, which art in heaven. You are our God. So we declare how it would be your name. So, Lord, we've come to worship you, to praise you, to magnify your great name. For you are yet worthy of the glory, of the honor, and of the praise. It's a privilege to be called your child, your son, and your daughter. So we are grateful today for this great salvation that you have granted us. You have given us this privilege to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. We thank you today. We ask you now, Lord, to bless, bless your word, send your anointing, destroy every yoke, remove every burden. And my prayer for my brother and my sister is we shall live better than we can. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that prayer, clap your hands one more time. Give the Lord praise. Help me celebrate and salute your very fine pastor. Amen, Dr. Teresa Bolton. Come on, celebrate. Thank God for this woman of God. I'm certainly honored that she would allow me to come and share in the place the Lord has given her to her wonderful husband. Amen, Elder Bolton. We thank God for him and all of them. The people of God. Matthew chapter number 7. I want to get right into the word of the Lord. On today I certainly blessed to be here. And I know that the Lord has given me what to say today. Even in the words of your pastor. She confirmed what I believe the Lord had given me. So I thank the Lord for even the confirmation of his word and this assignment. I've uh, been traveling and preaching now over 20 years and it's very rare now that I say uh, a new place. I don't go to too many new places. Uh, not because I won't, but just because of my schedule being pretty full. And annual appointments pretty much that I keep every year. But I've been coming every month to Michigan to uh, help out Bishop Combs and preach for him and drive for him and whatever 
and he called me and asked me about this Father's Day, and so uh, I said, I'm just going to be with him and then stay on over and be here on today. So I believe that I'm here by divine assignment Amen. and by divine appointment. I'm honored to, to be here. But Matthew chapter number 7, Jesus declares these words in the middle of his Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 7 and verse 7, when you found it, say amen. amen. He says, ask and it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone, somebody shout everyone. everyone. Come on, say it like you mean it, shout everyone. everyone. That asketh, receive it. He that seeketh, find it. To him that knocketh, it shall be open. What man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give good things to them that ask you? How many looking for some good things? Seek <laughs> first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things. There's nothing wrong with having things as long as things don't have you. Somebody say amen. amen. God wants to give you some things. You still don't believe me? Go to James uh, chapter number one. Verse 17. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness. He, he don't change up on you. He, he don't have mood swings. You know, some people have mood swings and sometimes men say women are moody, women have mood swings, but I found out some men are moody too. I'm not sure really what that's all about, but men have mood swings too. You know? Moody men make me nervous, but I'm just saying men, we all can get moody sometimes. Somebody say amen. Our life can give us a tood, an attitude. You know, uh, life can cause people to change up quick on you. It'd be nice to you one day. Uh, you better check tomorrow and see if they still feel the same way. You know, we have a way of trying to impress people when we first meet them or get connected with them. Uh, but really, the test is over time. Amen. That's, that's relationships, friendships. Uh, a real relationship has to be tested. Now, don't believe all of this Facebook romance. You know, uh, I got somebody on my Facebook. Uh, she has literally broke up with her husband every week this year. 
it's, it's constant drama and chaos. And, uh, you know, uh, they have, uh, have pictures together, but then the next day they talk about how they hate each other. You know, uh, a real relationship uh, takes some time. That's why you can't get involved so quickly. Uh, you got to give it some time. Because people will change up on you. But I'm glad we serve a God. There's no variableness. Neither shadow of turning. I want to talk for a few moments today on the favor of the Father. Uh, just tell somebody, I got the favor of God. Come on, say it like you mean it. I've got some favor with my Father. You know, sometime in households we talk about which one is the favored child. Which one is the favorite? I got, uh, I got that plug from my siblings because I was the youngest child. I was the last one that come out, and so they called me the spoiled child. And I was glad because I watched my brothers and sisters get knocked over the head. By the time I came along, my parents were so old, they didn't uh, have that strength anymore, so they just yelled at me, yelled a lot, you know. Instead of making me sit down, they just told me, sit down. And so my parents said, you don't you didn't get, you, didn't, you ain't getting whipped like we got whipped. But later on, I realized it's not so much I was a spoiled child. My parents were just wore out by the time I came along. I just got tired of all that whipping. <laughs> Amen. But people try to figure out which one is the favorite. Which one is getting the most, getting away with the most, shall I say. Getting the most benefits. Amen. That's what they said about Joseph. They said, He's the father's spoiled child. He gets gifts that we, don't, we didn't get. He got a coat of many colors. Where's my coat? And, and it can create jealousy. Amen. Some people still mad because you felt like you didn't get what your siblings got. And, and trying to they navigate even through adulthood because of your childhood. Oh you might as well say amen. amen. You're trying to uh, uh, figure life out even though you might have had some negatives in your background. But how many know we all had some things we had to work through? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's no perfect household. No perfect family. We all had some dark secrets. I can't get no help in here. Yeah. We have to work through. Sometimes we think our, our, our family is so uh, bad and we got so much going on. But trust me, there's some, something in every family. Everything that looked good on the outside. Amen. I already told you, don't believe all these pictures. Everything looking so good. Amen. There's some chaos and craziness we all got to deal with. That's why we need to learn how to have a relationship with God for ourselves. God can help you, amen, forgive even your parents and even your family members that have hurt you. God, a relationship with God can help you, amen, start all over again. Amen. You don't have to live uh, with the curse of your family and what you've been through and of your background and what they said about you because God has given you another chance. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. So we have this relationship now because of what Jesus has done. The Bible said he gave us access. Somebody shout access. That means we have this privilege of being a child of God. 
and, and, and really what this privilege does is give us the opportunity, amen, to have God's ear. Lord, have mercy. Amen. That means when you call on him, like he told Jeremiah, call on me and I will answer thee. You've got a God that won't turn a deaf ear to you. Somebody shout glory. glory. You ever try to a a ask somebody, amen, for something, trying to talk to somebody, and they act like they can't hear you? Amen. Especially when you ask them for a favor, they can't hear you. Hallelujah. I need something. Amen. And they're, and they're, and they're nowhere to be found. Hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, even the, the best relationships, amen, we are unable to always uh, uh, be there for people. We're, we're unable to, amen, be the sustaining power for everybody. We, uh, we, we are limited in our ability. Hallelujah. But we serve a God, amen, that is unlimited. Hallelujah. you got to learn how to take advantage of this access you don't have to be afraid you don't have to run away you don't have to run and hide amen you can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need somebody shout hallelujah I serve God that even has made a way for me to come. That's why the Bible said that the middle wall of partition, amen, that thing that, that, that separated us from God, amen, that thing that was blocking us from God, amen, our past, amen, sins and failures, amen, our mistakes, our issues, and, and all of this stuff, our hurt and our pain, hallelujah, had separated us from God. Our sin, Isaiah said, had separated us from God. Amen. Sometimes we've been so hurt that amen, we didn't feel like going to church. We didn't feel like going back to church. Hallelujah. Sometimes we've been hurt in the church. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad, amen, that that thing that separated us from God has been torn down and now we can come. Whosoever will let him come freely and take the water of life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I have a privilege. Amen. I have opportunity. I can come. You know, when you go to your parents' house, amen. Now, you can't act like this when you go to everybody's house. Amen. But when you go to your parents' house, amen, you can, uh, amen, um, literally make yourself at home. See, sometimes you tell people, make yourself at home, but you don't really mean it. Amen. But when, uh, they, when I go to mama's house, Amen. I can take my shoes off, even if my feet stink. Somebody say amen. I can just relax. I can chill. Amen. I can I can go in the refrigerator and I can amen help myself. I can get me a sandwich. Amen. Why? Because of relationship. Hallelujah. They know who I am. I'm not a stranger. Amen. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. When you have relationship, you're not a stranger to God. Amen. He knows who you are. The Lord knows them that are his. And let them that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Don't you know when you call on God, he knows just who you are. And he wants to help you. He wants to turn your situation around. He wants to fix your problem. He's just waiting on you to call on him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus said it's very simple. Can I tell you how simple it is? Amen. If you want God to answer you, amen, it's very elementary. It's not hard. Amen. Jesus said all you got to do is ask and you shall receive. A whole lot of people in church, but we're not talking to God. We don't have a prayer life outside of church. Hallelujah. We don't know how to take advantage of our access. Amen. But when you have a situation, you 
got to learn how to talk to God about it. Jesus said, go to your closet, shut your door, pray to your Father in secret, and he shall reward you openly. Oh, you got to learn how to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your problems. And then when you give it to God, you got to learn how to leave it right there. you got to cast all of your care. If you feel burdened down today, it's because you're not giving it over to Jesus. If you feel weighed down, it's because you're trying to take it, that burden all by yourself. But today I invite you to cast that burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. All you got to do is lay aside every weight. And then when you get up from the altar, you leave it right there. You're trying to fix it yourself. You're trying to work it out yourself. But he asked Abraham this question is anything too hard for the Lord Amen. Nothing is too hard for God. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible to them that believe God. Faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. I don't have to see it in the natural. I can see it by faith. I can see God turning it around. I can see God fixing my situation. I can see God solving my problem. I want to ask until I I receive. I'm going to see. You ever look for something and just can't seem to find it? Hardly you lost something. You lost your wallet. You're looking all over for it. You say, I know it's got to be here somewhere, but because of its value. Now, if you lose a couple pennies, amen, you don't kill yourself over it. You just say, I'm not worried about those pennies. But if you lose your wallet with all your credit cards and your ID in it, amen, you're turning the house upside down. You're knocking the dog over, kicking the kids out the way. Amen. Because you say, I've got to find this wall. Why? Because it holds value to you. When something holds value to you, you don't stop until you find it. Oh, and we got to learn how to go after God at his promises. Like they are valuable. All the promises of God in him are yes and amen. You don't give up on what God has promised you. You don't give up on your family. You don't give up on your blessing. Uh, hallelujah. Because God has made you a promise. Uh, he said if you seek, you're going to find. Uh, oh, somebody just go like this and shout, I'm looking for my blessing. Come on, shout, I'm looking for a miracle. Uh, amen. I'm looking. I'm expecting God to make a way out of no way. Uh, see, when you're looking, that means you believe you're going to find it. Uh, that means you're expecting it any day now. Uh, I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. Uh, but I believe God's got some favor for me. Uh, I believe God's got a blessing. Uh, and it's got my name on it. Uh, I'm looking for a miracle. Anybody looking for a miracle today? I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know how God is going to do it. But I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting when I go back to the doctor, like my mother did this week. They told her a few weeks ago, we see something on your breast. And so we have to even have an examination. And she called me the other day and said, I went back to the doctor and they gave me my checkup. But this time they couldn't find nothing. Slap your neighbor, high five and tell them nothing, nothing, nothing. Now when God works a miracle for you, now they won't be able to find anything. No trace of that sickness. No trace of that curse. God is going to bless some of you so good that there'll be no more trace of that generational curse over your life. God is going to bless you so good. There'll be no more trace of poverty over your life. He'll bless you when you come in. He'll bless you when you go out. Make you the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Plenty is in good. He said, I'll open the windows of heaven. And 
and I'll pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. Anybody believe God can bless you so good? You got to give some of it away. Anybody believe God can turn it around so good that you have to tell everybody, look what the Lord has done. I'm about to get out of your way, but shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm expecting some favor this week. Come on, say it like you mean it. I'm expecting some results this week. I'm expecting unusual favor. Ah, beyond my expectation. Because I has not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love him. Don't you know God's got a blessing that's been prepared for you. Prepared and prepaid. Oh, you ought to shout hallelujah. It's already been taken care of. God already took care of it. God already fixed it for you. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is seek. And keep on knocking. Somebody knock on something. Knock on your seat. Hallelujah. Knock. 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 When you really want to see somebody, you don't, you don't call them on the phone. You knock. On the door of the house. And then sometimes, you know, people don't want to be bothered no more. They act like they're not busy. And then you say, I know you in there. <laughs> they turn the light off. They been too late. You already saw them in there. I know you in there. I need you to open the door. I mean, it's an emergency. I got to see you face to face. Uh, even when you really want to talk to somebody. Uh, uh, you can't do text message, even telephone, uh, but you want to see them face to face, uh, and I'm so glad because of Jesus, uh, we can approach the throne of God, uh, we can communicate with him one on one, uh, hallelujah, we can even have access to his throne, uh, hallelujah, we can, hallelujah, meet God, uh, we can have a meeting with God, Lord have mercy, uh, how we can talk to God, uh, we can tell God just what we need to do. We can tell God just what's on our heart. We can talk to God just like he's our father. Hallelujah. He said, if you being evil, if you being human, if you being natural, you do your best to be a good father to your children. You do your best to be a provider. You do your best to take care of them. But he said, how much more shall your heavenly father give good things to them that ask him as much as we do our best. But we are limited in our natural ability. We don't have the means. We don't have the resources to do all we would like to do. We just do what we can do. But I'm so glad on this Father's Day that we serve a God with unlimited potential. We serve a God with limitless power. I don't have to be afraid that he can't meet my needs. Ah, and then some. Because he said he'll give you the desires of your heart. So he meets all of our need and he meets some of our wants. As long as you ask with the right spirit. He just said in James you can't ask amiss. That you may consume it upon your own lust. You can't ask just because you're trying to outdo somebody. You want a bigger car because your neighbor got a bigger car. But if you ask with the right spirit, if you ask with the right motive, if you ask to be a millionaire, so you can, hallelujah, help the kingdom, oh, if you ask ah, for a blessing, ask to send me a big car, so I can pick people up for church, I can't get no help in here, if you ask 
with the right spirit that God has said because you asked right I'm going to answer right because you asked me with a pure heart because you asked me with the right motive didn't have no selfish ambition amen we're trying to just be big we're trying to just be famous but you want God to bless you so you can advance the kingdom so you can pay for television so you can be a blessing to the church so you can be a blessing to the pastor so you won't just pop put it in your pocket but you want to bless somebody else that God said I'm going to bless you because you are blessable oh, anybody want to be blessable I don't want God to say I want to do it for you but you ain't acting right so I'm going to do it for somebody else I want God to look at me and say you are a candidate for a miracle you are a candidate for a blessing and I can say Lord don't pass me by my mind is right my spirit is right and I believe you got some good things in store for me touch a neck tell God's got some good things in store for you oh I don't know what you need from God but God's got some good things God's got some good gifts God's got some good presents oh my God and he just wants to give it to you you know when somebody wants to be a blessing to you they'll give you a gift amen like y'all did today for Elder you gave him a gift and hopefully he'll give your father a gift today. Hopefully he'll, he'll put something in the hand. And when you give him a gift, you don't come back tomorrow and say, I need that money for that gift. Somebody say amen. You don't give nobody something for Christmas and then call the next day and say, you know, I paid $57.45 for that. Did you just, you know, Run me some money. No, because you gave it as a gift. And I'm so glad when God gives it to us, all he wants us to do is use it. Amen. Ain't nothing worse, amen, than you buying somebody something. You buy them a coffee pot, and you go visit them six months later, and the coffee pot is still sitting on the stand in the box. You're going to say, give me that coffee. I want to go get my money back. Why? Because they didn't use what you gave them. And all God wants us to do when he gives us a gift, gives us gifts of the spirit, gives us gifts of prophecy and healing and faith and miracles. And he gives us gifts. He gives us gifts so we can help somebody else. He gives us blessings so we can bless somebody else. And all God wants us to do is use what it gives us. I asked God to anoint me. And God didn't anoint me just for me to be anointed. That means I got to get up. I got to catch flights. Sometime early in the morning. Like I got to do this week. That means I got to pack. That means I got to prepare. That means I got to have something to say. That means I got to deal with life on the road. See, God can't use you until you're willing them to go along with the process. God wants to help some of you. God wants to give you something. But you got to be blessable to the point that you say, Lord, if you bless me, I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to win somebody. I'm going to get somebody in the church. I'm going to pray for somebody. I'm going to do something worth you blessing me for. Because I want to hear you say, well done. He said the one was given one talent. It's not about what is given to you. It's about what you do with what's given to you. But since he only had one talent, the Bible said he went and buried. And he buried it because, like some of us say, oh, this, I ain't got nothing worth anything. I'm not much. I can't do nothing. I'm just little old me. So he buried his talent. But guess what? When 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 judgment day came, he got in trouble for burying even just one tax. Because God said, whenever I give you something, 
I'm coming back to seek. What you do with? You asked me to bless you, so I blessed you. What did you do with it? You asked me to, to provide for you, to help you, to make a way for you. I did my part, but what did you do with your part? Did you keep your end of the bargain? Or did you take it and just, I'm going to run with this. You know, every time you don't pay your tithe and give your offering, you bury it. Y'all didn't know that, did you? I didn't mean to hit you like that on Father's Day. This is my first time. I need you to love me so I can uh, get body back. Yeah, God said, I can't get voice to say, oh, I, I can't sing. I, mean, I can't sing in front of people. I'm just. So you just sing in the shower. God didn't give you that to sing in the shower. Somebody say amen. amen. When he gives you what you asked him for, he expects you to do what you're supposed to do with it. I believe sometimes God's got all these blessings for us, and I believe sometimes what the holdup is, we know the holdup is not God. God is not going around looking for more money. Because he said all the silver and gold. Yeah, we got to ask ourselves sometimes, how come the things ain't working out? If the problem isn't God, then it's two things. It's either not time yet, you got to be patient. But some of us, it's bedtime. You just not in the right position. Time or disobedience? He said, I'll give good things to those that ask me. The best father is the one that can do whatever the child asks. Wouldn't that be great? Every time you went home and said, I need a new bike. All right, I'm going to go get one. I need a new video game. All right, I'll go get one. We would say, Woo, wow. I got a good dad. We're telling everybody, well, I got a good daddy because he just give me whatever I want. We say, I got the best dad. But how many know just giving things without giving love, without giving discipline? It's just that, giving things. So God wants to give us some things, but he's, he's the best father. So he said, I can't just spoil you. I, 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 gotta, I gotta try to get you to grow up. I want to give you some things, but we got to balance it out with some discipline. I first of all got to see that I'm done, that you can handle. Yeah, sometimes we ask God for big blessings, God said, You can't handle a little bliss. You don't do right with a little bit that I give you. Lord, I need you to bless me with a thousand dollars, but you don't give right off the thousand that he gives you. It's quiet. That's good. That means we, we all hear it. I need you to, I'm all right. I don't need you to say amen. Just say oh me if you got it. Somebody shout, help, Lord. I want to miss my 
blessing. We talk so much about blessing, but I think sometimes we're missing it because we're out of position. We're out of place. I want to receive the favor from the Father. So I got to be a good son. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I, 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 I can't be a stuck up son. I can't just come to God any kind of way. I can't get a, 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 a the worst thing if you've been good to your children then all of a sudden they get an attitude because you can't do one thing. said, listen, everything you have is mine. <laughs> you didn't buy nothing. Your bed is mine. Your blankets are mine. Your pillow. You know, you, sometimes you talk to your kids like you want to. Amen. Your toys are mine. Your video games are mine. Don't get an attitude with me because I take all my stuff back. You can sleep on the floor. Actually, the floor is mine, too. So I don't know where we're going to put you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, don't want, I, don't want, I don't want God to say, oh, no, no. I, I want to do it for you, but you're not acting right. My nephew one time asked me for this game. Christmas time and he hit me real late. You know, I always tell him, you gotta hit me early. Don't hit me late. When you hit me the day before, you, 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 you might hit an empty plate, so. That means somebody else put their request in. So I tell you, I tell you, hit me early, hit me early December. So he was disobedient, so he hit me about the 22nd, 23rd. So I said, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to sweat my car in my faith now. Nah, I don't know. I don't know if I can make it happen or not. I don't know. I know you all never did that. You never sweat by faith. I understand. Then he sent me this long message. He said, I just, I, I, I understand. He said, I just want you to know every request I've ever asked you, you have always given me what I asked for. So I just want to thank you because you've always been the best uncle. You've always been there for me. You've always done what you could. Man, by the time I read that text message, I went and bought two games. <laughs> Tell you how to get something from God. Just say, Lord, I thank you for all that you've already done for me. If you never do anything else, no, I'm not gonna come to God with no attitude. I'm gonna let the Lord know you've been good to me, and I thank you for all that you've already done. And if you never do anything else, let's all stand, lift your hands, and say, Lord, I thank you. Given it to me. I can't boast in anything. You've been good to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I first started preaching, I was a teenage preacher, 18, 19. We preached revivals back then. I had one suit. One black suit. Lord, but, but, but it ain't this one, don't worry. <laughs> all, I, all I could do is preach three or four nights. <laughs> I had to change my. All I could do was change my shirt and tie every night. And the Lord said, You be faithful, keep preaching this one suit. I got clothes in, in the closet. I don't know what to do with clothes in the cleaners, clothes in my car, clothes up at my mother's house, clothes. I got 
more clothes with me on this trip than I know what to do with. Clothes everywhere. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hey! He can give you, bless you so good, you got more than you know what to do with. You ladies ought to say amen, because I know you got shoes coming out your closet. You got ladies trying to get real quiet on that. That's all. Right. They didn't want to help me on that one. They wanted to be quiet. <laughs> stuff just everywhere. When I see stuff everywhere, I don't know what to do. I said, Lord, I thank you because you told me you're going to give me more than what I can have. It's a blessing to have to decide what you're going to wear. That means you got choices. Some people got up this morning, they didn't have no choice. They just... And one thing in that closet. <laughs> well, this is easy. Put on what I got. It's a blessing. Don't know what car you're going to drive today. Y'all don't believe God can bless you like that? I was driving Bishop this week. I had the keys. I said, come on, Bishop. No, we're not taking that. We're taking other. Oh, excuse me. I said, I'm sorry. I only have one car in my house. <laughs> Options are a blessing. Somebody say amen. amen. Hey! Exceeding. I'm talking today about the best father. The greatest father. And you have his favor over your life. Because you're connected by covenant. Woo, a better covenant. Better than what Moses had. Better than what David had. Better than what Joshua had. Established upon better. Somebody shout better. Woo. Slap somebody tell me it's all better now. It's all better. It's all better. Thank you. Hey. I feel good. I almost feel like running. I'm going to some weight. Hallelujah. Somebody just shout, better. Father, we thank you today for covenant relationship. Thank you for a better covenant. Established upon better promises. We thank you for covenant agreement. That's why you said if two or three agree is touching anything they shall ask shall be done. So Lord, we ask you to bless us with good things. Most importantly, we ask you to make us blessable We'll do right with the things that you bless us with. Real quickly, I want to lay hands. It's going to take two minutes, so please don't leave. I want to lay my hand on any man, even a young man, that would let me pray for you today. Any man or any young man in this house. Come quickly, come quickly. Hey. Pastor pushed him. She said he need prayer. All right. Every man, come, 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 come. That would allow me to. Please don't leave. Two minutes. We're going to be out of here. And I'm going to ask you to sow into this anointing, and we're going to get out of here. Lift your hands up, man. Hey, top bullshit. I want, I want you all to hear me. I need you all here with me in the spirit because I need your intercession. The Lord has really been challenging me lately. And I did this, not even Father's Day, I did this last week in a revival. One night I prayed for all the men. And the Lord said, there's an assault on the men. The enemy wants you out of place. If you notice, we have about three different 
things you deal with with men if you want to say men in the church of course you deal with the absentee man uh, most men most churches are full of women and there's absentee men there's men that are connected by marriage or by family but they rarely show up absent men. Then you have a attack on the manhood of men. A lot of men now in the church act like females. And I'm blessed today to see men in this church that act like men. That's a blessing. I look like you. I, I, re I rarely see that. Now I travel all over the country. Rarely do I see churches with real men. Give these men a hand. No switching men. I can't get no help. I'm sorry. No men that don't know what they are. And then you have you have absentee man. You have. men that don't act like men. Then you have inactive men. So men that are there, but they're not in place. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. It's just taking up space. And you have that sometime in the home as well as in the church. But my prayer today is I'm going to break that curse off of the men. No absentee, that means we're gonna be here as much as we can. Whenever the doors are open, if our schedule permits, or we're gonna be in communication with the pastor, and she gonna know why we're absent. I can't get no help in here. That's what men do. Men communicate. Men don't run and hide from responsibility. And then, I ain't even worried about that spirit because it ain't on none of you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And then I'm going to pray against inactive men. Lift your hands for 60 seconds. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the men in this house. I pray that they be leaders that you've called them to be. How Raise him up, God, to be what you have him to be. I rebuke the enemy, cover with your blood. A man of God. I call you a man of God. Come on, if, you're, if your seed is up here, if your family is up here, your husband, your son, intercede, intercede, intercede. How shall be? Use him for your glory. The blood of Jesus. Every gift that you put inside of them. Yes, Lord. The hand of God is on this young man. We thank you. We seal him. Oh, In Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Cover him. From the crown of his head. To the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory. How shall my king? Toboko shamande. Yanapo shande. Use them as leaders in this house, in their family. How shall my king? In the name of Jesus, the favor of God is on their life. They're walking in faith. They're walking as leaders. They are men of God. They are servants of God. They're active in the house of God. They know their role, know their place. And I call them leaders in your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Give God a praise for the men.